How do you choose between cefazolin and vancomycin for cellulitis? And what are the actual indications for IV antibiotics versus PO antibiotics? One of the main reasons I wanted to make this video is because a lot of times I see vancomycin being used when it's not indicated and when cefazolin would be better. And I see people using antibiotics like ceftriaxone or they use doxycycline monotherapy when technically we're supposed to be using doxycycline plus amoxicillin once we switch to orals. And there's some small minor nuances that I think are worthwhile reviewing. The first major decision is figuring out whether your patient needs MRSA coverage or not. And the main way that we do that is by determining if the infection is non-purulent or if it's purulent. And purulent can be describing uh, an infection that has pus associated with it, an abscess, or even a patient that just has a history of known MRSA infection or IV drug use. And so for the patients in the purulent group, they will need MRSA coverage. So what are our IV options for uh, MRSA coverage? That's going to be primarily vancomycin. Whereas for PO options, we're going to have things like Bactrim, doxycycline, and linezolid. One thing that I want to caution you on is that a lot of times people just prescribe doxycycline, but if you actually look on UpToDate, we really should be prescribing both uh, doxycycline plus amoxicillin in this case. Um, Linezolid is really going to be reserved for patients who cannot tolerate Bactrim or doxycycline for some reason because there's increased side effects such as thrombocytopenia and things like that. And clindamycin is also an option, but we tend to avoid it as much as possible due, the, due to the increased risk for C. diff. In terms of the non purulent infections, our main IV antibiotic option is going to be cefazolin. And I really want to emphasize this because a lot of people actually prescribe ceftriaxone for cellulitis. And while ceftriaxone is an option for skin and soft tissue infections, it's not really a favored antibiotic for cellulitis. And one of the reasons is because first generation cephalosporins like cefazolin have much stronger gram positive coverage comp compared to third generation cephalosporins, where you can see the gram positive coverage is quite a bit weaker, but you end up getting a lot more gram-negative coverage instead. So don't make that mistake of treating with ceftriaxone when we have a much better option with cefazolin. In terms of our oral options, the most popular one is going to be Keflex or cephalexin. But the problem with Keflex is that it is a QID medication four times a day, which can make it very difficult for patients to adhere to and can lead to a lot of treatment failures when patients are not able to take a four times a day medication. So recently, I've actually been uh, favoring a lot more doing a medication called Cefadroxyl, which is just a BID medication, and that can really improve patient compliance and just make it an easier regimen for them to adhere to in general. The main indications for whether you're going to need IV antibiotics or not is is going to be if it's very extensive erythema or if it's rapidly progressing or if the patient failed PO antibiotics or they cannot tolerate PO antibiotics for some reason. Those are the main reasons that you would want to use IV antibiotics. One thing that I really want to emphasize is that if possible, you really do want to use cefazolin because it's much more potent than vancomycin. Cefazolin is actually a lot more bactericidal compared to vancomycin. And so if you are able to give cefazolin, it tends to be a much faster treatment and much more efficacious treatment for gram-positive infections compared to vancomycin. However, there are just going to be times that you will need that vancomycin coverage to cover for MRSA. And one of the things that uh, you should actually know is that if there's any fever, that should automatically be an indication for vancomycin just for empiric coverage uh, for MRSA. And if the patient is very ill, so severe illness, or if they have um, neutropenia, you should actually add cefepime as well for coverage of gram negatives and uh, pseudomonas. In general, treatment duration should be 5 to 14 days, and we tend to favor the shorter duration if possible, but sometimes the uh, erythema is just very slow to resolve and you will need to extend that duration. And of course, once the patient is responding to an IV uh, antibiotic, you can actually make the switch to a PO antibiotic on discharge. You should keep in mind that the most common organisms are going to be your streptococcus uh, organisms, uh, but also methicillin-sensitive uh, staph aureus. However, when you start getting that uh, pus formation or an abscess, that's when you start to worry about uh, methicillin-resistant staph aureus. So again, most common organisms are going to be strep species and MSSA. Expected improvement can take up to 24 to 48 hours. So uh, you shouldn't be too surprised if the next day you come in, uh, the patient still has quite a bit of erythema. And you also shouldn't be too concerned, even if it spreads slightly further than the original margins, because as the uh, infection is starting to get clear, 
weird, it actually can spread a little bit in terms of the erythema. But what you should be looking for is signs that the patient is overall improving, such as decrease in, in the white count, uh, decrease in the fever, and less tenderness and pain in the affected region. If the patient is not improving after this time frame, I would really have a low suspicion to get some further imaging to see if a new abscess has potentially formed, or maybe there was an abscess that wasn't seen initially. So not improving, um, consider ultrasound or a CT scan. Another thing that you should know is that elevation of the affected extremity is actually quite useful and actually helps reduce edema and also uh, hastens the improvement of the cellulitis. So it's also a good thing to counsel your patients on or even include a miscellaneous order for your nursing. And then finally, this is a very, very common question, uh, but if you ever see bilateral uh, lower extremity cellulitis, it is very, very exceedingly rarely uh, to be caused by basically spontaneous cellulitis of both lower extremities at the same time. Uh, almost always, this is going to be venous stasis dermatitis. And uh, you really should assess if there's warmth, if there's pus, if there's like actually a true concern for cellulitis, because probably over 90% of the time, bilateral lower extremity cellulitis is just going to be venous stasis and not a true cellulitis. So bilateral lower extremity cellulitis is exceedingly rare. Most likely, it will be st venous stasis dermatitis. Finally, just a little uh, last notes about cellulitis. So even before you start treatment, you do want to make sure that it, it is truly just a simple run-of-the-mill cellulitis and not something more concerning. So one of the infections we really want to be worried about is going to be for necrotizing fasciitis. And this would be suggested if there's gas on the exam or if it's just an extremely severe cellulitis and you get the CRP and it's very elevated, the patient's hyponatremic, things like that. Those would all be things that you use uh, when you calculate the Lurinex score, score for the risk of uh, necrotizing fasciitis. And if this is a concern, you should definitely get the surgical team consulted right away so they can evaluate. And you should also start vancomycin and clindamycin uh, for concern for necrotizing fasciitis. If you have a diabetic foot ulcer, uh, these um, tend to be more polymicrobial and they require a little bit of a different approach and a different uh, antibiotic regimen. A lot of times may require an anaerobic coverage and or pseudomonal coverage. If you have any hand cellulitis, this is a very, very sensitive area for cellulitis. So you uh, should consult a surgical team uh, immediately as well in case there are some potential surgical needs because you don't want infection to get worsened in the hand, which is a very fragile area and can lead to a lot of morbidity if any complications occur. So consult surgery right away if there is a hand cellulitis going on. And I also want you to be very wary of groin cellulitis as well because of uh, the possibility of Fournier's gangrene, which is a very high mortality uh, condition. Also very similar along the lines of necrotizing fasciitis. If there's any concern uh, with the groin cellulitis, get your surgical subspecialties involved as soon as possible. All right, so that's my basic approach to cellulitis. Remember to assess the need for MRSA coverage by determining if it's purulent or non-purulent, and then determine the need for IV antibiotics based on the severity and the extent of the cellulitis. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.